Minister Gravigno, once again, welcome to Jakarta. It is truly an honor for me to receive the first visit of Portuguese Foreign Minister to Indonesia in more than a decade. And your visit creates a new momentum for our two countries to further strengthen bilateral relations. During the meeting with Minister Gravigno, I reiterated a number of cooperation. First, on investment. There has been a remarkable growth in our investment value. Portugal investment in Indonesia significantly grew by 2,000% from 2019 to 2022. Indeed, this is a record high number. Investment on renewable energy and blue economy were discussed as priorities sector. We share the same views on the importance of expediting the completion of Indonesia-AU Comprehensive Economic Partnership negotiation. Second, on palm oil cooperation, I appreciate it. Portugal trusts to palm oil from Indonesia. Portugal's import of palm oil from Indonesia increased by 77% from 2019 to 2022. The rise resulted from incentive from importing palm oil derivatives as biodiesel feedstock. I reiterate during the conversation my concern on the number of discriminatory policies taken by the EU, including the European Union Deforestation Regulation or EUDR. Third, on energy cooperation, I'm glad to see mutual commitment and shared goals in renewable energy from both countries. We welcome EDP's Renewables Floating Solar Project in Duryangkang Reservoir, Baitam Islands. This project has a total value of US dollar 2 billion and could serve as a catalyst for more Portuguese investment and in renewable energy. Fourth, on maritime cooperation. We discussed the contribution of Indonesian fishing crews to Portugal maritime economy. There are more than 300 of them. We discussed measures to safeguard their interests, including through certification and capacity building. We also explore collaboration in blue economy, fisheries, and combating IUU fishing. Colleagues from the media, beside the bilateral issues, we also discuss regional and global issues. I share the priorities of Indonesia's chairmanship in ASEAN. I also share about Indonesia's determination to make Indo-Pacific as a region of peace and stability. Indonesia will spare no effort to make ASEAN matters and to make Southeast Asia as the epicentrum of growth. I also share about Timor-Leste accession process to be a full member of ASEAN. Colleagues, our bilateral meeting concluded on a positive note, and I express sincere thanks for Minister Cravigno's visit. Excellency, I now invite you to deliver your views. Thank you very much, Excellency, dear colleague. It is uh, for me an honor and also a pleasure to be today in Jakarta conducting with uh, my colleague, Minister Retno Marsudi, the uh, bilateral talks on Portugal and Indonesia uh, relations. We uh, have enormous potential in this relationship, a potential which is much greater than what we have realized in the past. And although in traditional, area, traditional areas of our economies, and some of them have been mentioned, uh, we uh, can deepen our, our interaction. Also, above all, I think, looking at the future, we uh, have the opportunity to focus on uh, issues such as renewable energy, uh, which is a fundamental part of the green transition that both Portugal and Indonesia are going through. And, uh, of course, the sustainable blue economy, which uh, for my country and also for Indonesia, I think, are so important for our futures. By focusing on these two areas, I believe that we can develop a shared 
interests over the next years and decades that can bring our peoples and our economies closer together. And so we looked at some practical manners in which this can be done. I wanted also to um, make clear our strong support for the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with, uh, between the European Union and Indonesia. I believe that this is very important for the economic relations, the trade and investment between Indonesia and the European Union, but it is also very important to help shape the changing global geo-economy. So it is more than simply a trade agreement. It is uh, an economic partnership agreement, but it is one also that has uh, political and strategic uh, consequences, which I believe of great, are of great interest for both parties. I had the opportunity to congratulate Indonesia on the leadership of, the, uh, of ASEAN uh, in 2023, in a moment in which uh, this region faces complex challenges, such as the situation in Myanmar, more broadly, the situation in the Indo-Pacific, which uh, over the last number of years has emerged as a region of rivalry. But we are fully supportive of the notion that above all, the Indo-Pacific should be a zone of prosperity and stability for all of the countries in the region. And I think that the leadership of Indonesia and ASEAN is an important contribution towards that objective. In the context of the European Union, we are also very happy to uh, support, to lend the support of the European Union to this process. I think that uh, this is a world in which, uh, unfortunately, uh, difficult challenges face all of us, and it is in these uh, moments of rapid transformation uh, amid, uh, amid difficult challenges that uh, we should seek to come close to countries with whom we have friendly relations and with whom we can work together to ensure the best interests of our countries, our peoples, but also of the wider regions in which we are inserted. And this is very much the spirit uh, with which our talks have been conducted this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.